One of the things that I like is uh, just get out and explore your own backyard. I think that's one of the things that really connects people with nature, which will ultimately make them want to conserve nature, is just getting out and experiencing it. You know, the, what we have around us, it's up to us to manage and take care of, you know, both for now and for future generations. And I think as much as we get out and experience it, um, it'll really make us want to go out and protect it even more. Life growing up was just life in the low country. Growing, I grew up on a on a deep water creek in Charleston and played in the marshes and grew up surfing and just was able to enjoy uh, what the low country really has to offer as a kid. I've always been around water growing up, um, either being out on a boat, fishing, um, surfing, you know, my whole childhood and all growing up. So I've always had an affinity for the water. Uh, and then when I was younger, we used to take a lot of trips down to uh, the Caribbean and uh, Bahamian Islands down there and that kind of created a love for the snorkeling, which eventually turned into diving. I've been diving for a little over 20 years now. I uh, started diving in college, actually. Um, the best part about it is just the freedom and the just overall enjoyment of just being in a quiet list surrounding, except for oysters popping or fish nibbling on things, and really just getting to experience the wildlife firsthand and close up. You know, it's really hard to explain what it's like being underwater to folks who haven't had that experience, we can take a lot of videos and show it, which is really nice, but um, it's just a very beautiful feeling, you know, and something that I've always really uh, just fallen in love with at an early age. Yeah, definitely love sharks. It's actually one of the funnest parts of the job. You know, we get to dive every day with, you know, upwards of 13 some sharks in here, multiple different species. Um, and I'm also one of the ones who gets to go out and collect the sharks also. It really, being able to work so closely with the sharks, either while diving or fishing or just handling them in the backup, it really just teaches you so much more about them and it really just shows a lot of the misconceptions people really have about sharks in the wild. They're not ravenous man-eaters, you know, in fact, if anything, it's always kind of made me laugh at how hard it is to get a shark to eat in captivity, how sensitive they are to different meds and different things like that. And, um, they're a lot more sensitive than people really would ever think. You know, you normally just see Jaws, you know, the one little movie that I think scared everyone out of the water in the 70s, and it really just put them in such a bad light. And it's, um, it's just, it's really a, a, a fun part of my job, really seeing how cool sharks really are and how little we do need to fear them in the long run, which is, uh, I think, opposite of what most people really think. They eat other fish, you know, just like big fish eat little fish. That's just kind of the natural chain out there. In the offshore, when we're out there diving and collecting and we're seeing the whole ecosystem, you're going to see little black sea basses and spot tail pins and vermilion snapper, some of the reef fishes, the bottom dwelling ones, and that's going to be a natural food source for a lot of the sharks out there. It's just big fish eat little fish, whether it's a shark eating a little fish or an amberjack or a cravaljack or cobia eating a small fish too. But humans are not on the menu. In fact, uh, it's kind of one of the things that you can always look at. Most shark bites are a single bite and then the animal lets us go. Obviously the one bite can be very bad depending on where it is, but they don't just sit in there circling after us most of the time because truly they realize we're not their food source just by the taste pretty quickly. And they're actually very uh, consistent on what they like to eat. We notice that when we're trying to get them feed here at the aquarium and get them used to new foods. I'll have some sharks that'll uh, just swim up next to it and even smell it. And if it's not the salmon they're looking for presented in the right direction, they'll swim away and it was a perfectly good piece of mackerel. It's, um, yeah, they're a lot pickier, so uh, and humans are not on the menu, luckily. The sharks are very sensitive and really we just need to be careful about overfishing. Um, one of our apex predators and, and how we even handle some of the animals. Um, the way the food chain works, if you take out the top predator, there's gonna be chain reactions down the line. The oceans really need that type of protection, even for the large uh, apex predators, even like a great white shark, they need protection from humans at times. Here at the aquarium, we can lead by example with our programs, uh, like our good catch program, um, teaching people about ways to uh, maybe fish in a more sustainable way, and truly just trying to be out there and be a conservation leader, I think is one of the best things that we can do is set that example for other uh, citizens and other generations to hopefully learn from. 
um, whether it's going out there and fishing or taking a class with DNR or coming here to the aquarium to learn about the different species. Uh, that's just going to be a way that's going to connect us all to sharks and hopefully want to protect them a little bit better.